also have fire bombing from the ambulance <laughs> groups. <laughs> All right, well, um, if, if, uh, if that stays on, and by the way, your cameras, uh, at the moment, you still seem to be a, a whirling circle to not only me, but also on Blog TV, so I don't know whether you want to turn your camera on and off again to see whether that helps. Um, but we'll bring, in, we'll bring in our first caller. I say the first caller, he's the only one at the moment, so if you want to join us... say if you want to join us um unfortunately that that link above the video box doesn't appear to be working at the moment we're, we're trying to sort that out otherwise just find us on uh skype send a contact request and include some gist of uh, what you'd like to ask hi gary how are you okay can you hear me we can hear you very well oh excellent um, yeah, I thought for Mother's Day I would sort of broach the subject of motherhood, the experiment. Is of... it Mother's Day? Oh no, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, Seriously? I'm pretty oh, sure. You suck. Um, so um, yeah, so I thought, so thought I'd just bring up the subject of this idea that life, you know, without God, the fact is we're stuck with unintelligent design. All right, there's no creative purpose, no agenda. It's, I describe it as gladiator wars. Four billion years of little DNA molecules fighting with each other. The swords come out, the big sharp teeth, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The whole thing is basically a slaughterhouse. And, um, let me see. I, I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so what is the experiment that mothers conduct? They basically say, okay, I'm going to thrust the consciousness into this thing. All right? Now, if I went to the EPA and said, this is what I, my plan is, all right, I'd have to have an environmental impact statement. I'd have to explain what I attempt to prove or accomplish. I'd have to come to some standard and say, this is going to actually accomplish something. And my argument is, is all this, all this anti-religion stuff is just fine to get rid of the gay bigotry and the other social nastiness of, of, of the religious suppression. But if you're just going to replace it with another fairy tale, I mean, you call it the magic sandwich show, you could call it the voodoo economic show, or you could call it the false hope show, or the uh, I'm going to pretend I'm not going to die show, or I'm going to pretend I'm super attractive and marvelous show. I mean, you know, humans are full of delusions, not only the God delusion, but the whole life purpose, Santa Claus, Merry Christmas, I love you mom delusion. I mean, their delusions are everywhere. And everybody, in my opinion, seems to be running from a truth that is, we are part of an unintelligent design that has basically created a carnage slaughterhouse, and you all seem fine with that. I mean, Aaron Ross. I, I think we've discussed this before, I think, Gary, and um, I think your view was that uh, it, it's almost irresponsible to have children. Is that an accurate... Well, actually, I think it's—I think it's in most cases criminal. I don't even think they give it a moment's thought. I don't think they think about what they're going to do if the kid comes out broken. I don't think they're going to think about their kids actually going to die someday and how they're going to die. I don't think they think Gary, about divorces. Gary, and, what, 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 do, what do you eat when you might shoot to death horribly doing it? What? What do I what eat? No. Why do you bother eating when you might shoot to death horribly while doing it? Yeah, sorry, I, I just, I might something horribly while doing it. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I... No, I, what he was saying, uh, it's, I, I think I'll come back to that point, if, if I may, in a second. Um, but just continuing with um, what I was addressing with you, uh, Gary, if I may. Um, I, I think this is something that I raised with you before when we were discussing this, that um, in a way you're right, and I think that it is... Um, it, it, the, there is a lack of responsibility on many people who are uh, bringing people into the world. I mean, the inability to look after them and having to rely on um, charity or um, state donations is, is just one example. But you're talking much more generally. And I think that I, I can see where you're coming from with that, because in a way, life is purposeless. But the problem is, isn't it, we are simply creatures of DNA, and it's built into the DNA to reproduce and um, so I think that's the hurdle that has to be overcome. But it's not. It's be built into the DNA to have sex, okay? DNA's been gaming us, right? It fooled us what's because... What's the purpose of having sex? Well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the purpose. I'm not talking about the end game. I'm talking about what our biology demands, okay? We get hungry and we get horny. We don't get horny to have kids. We get horny to have sex. Okay, because that takes care of the kid thing automatically. I mean, salmon don't swim upstream to because they are thinking, I'm going to make a bunch of baby fish. 
That's not what they're thinking, okay? They're hungry to get upstream. They're not hungry to have kids. Um, no animal procreates on purpose, and certainly we don't procreate on purpose in the sense that our biology doesn't say make babies. It says do the process that will cause babies, all right? Yes, uh, I follow that. I'm going to go to Thunder, but just remind people if you would like to comment on this topic or any other, uh, send a contact re request through Skype to um, Magic Sandwich Show, and we'll get you on. Thunder? Well, fine, okay. Um, so, what, what do you think the actual purpose of life is? Why, why um, do you do anything? Well, what I'm doing is, is arguing for a minimization of the suffering. I value suffering. I say conscious animals, any animal, any sentient experience suffering has value. That's the creator of value. Okay, I fundamentally disagree with you about the purpose of life. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm sort of pointing out, is that, yes, you're an atheist, I'm an atheist, and we fundamentally disagree on what life is, okay? Yeah, I think the only value in the universe is sentience. Feeling organisms create value. There is no value till one exists. No, no, I mean, if you really wanted to actually sort of express it, um, it it's a minimization of free energy parameter space. Um, but in, in um, common parlance, yeah, okay, uh, you might say that in, in the short term, the first uh, order of approximation is that people procreate because that's what they're good at. Um, but also in that same parameter space, um, people discover things because that is a more favorable um, point on parameter space than not knowing how the universe functions. Uh, so in many ways, the actual um, uh, uh, thermodynamic purpose of life is to actually discover the purpose, uh, to, is to actually create uh, an adequate model of the universe. Well, I'm all for an adequate model. My point is, is the model is basically a replicating DNA molecule completely out of control. It's like a universal forest fire or something. It's not a positive event. It's kind of no, a dis... No, but that, 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 that's the minimization, right? There is a selective pressure on that, and the selective pressure is the gene sequences that are, are capable of most accurately modeling reality at the one the best, correct? I'm not going to argue about genetic philosophy. I don't believe genetic philosophy this exists. Is philosophy. I, I'm, this is, this is well, can I finish one sentence? All right. I don't believe this, that philosophy is all genetic. I don't think our intelligence, in terms of its actual physical structure, the logic and the information, has anything to do with genetics. It's called philosophy. It's not a biological function. It's a function of a thinking machine that biology gave us, okay? We run software programs that are made out of vocabulary and language, all right? That is our intelligence. The structure, the computer, is sort of irrelevant to what we can think. We can think anything. Our biology does not own us. Our logic can own us. Concordance, I think you want to make a point, and then we'll go to Owen. Well, I think, I think Gary started making the point I was going to make, which is, we are not just our biology. And in the same way that, you know, a, a colony is not just a bunch of ants, there, there's an emergent behavior. When, when we transition from um, simplistic behaviors to complex behaviors, there's a whole new level of meaning. And, you know, viewed strictly from a reductionist biological sense, we are vehicles for our genes. And that's specifically what Gary's talking about. We are reproducing machines to propagate certain combinations of genes that travel together. But we can also write out our genes. We can also benefit from this as the vehicle. Um, we, we get to see a lot of cool things along the way. Uh, I, I'm not quite clear on whether Gary is, is actually this views life this bleakly, or, or if this is leading up to some additional argument, but th there's a lot more to it than just the biology. When you strip it down and you pull all the neurons out of your brain, you won't find joy or happiness or art or whatever in any of those neurons. It's the, the action of them together. It's our social behaviors. It's our uh, complex, higher-order behaviors that emerge from the simpler biological aspects. Yeah, your genes have only one goal in mind, and that is to propagate themselves. We, on the most basic animal reductionist level, only have the goal of passing on our particular genetic markers. 
but on a much higher level, a behavior emerges from those simple behaviors that is all of art and literature and society and culture and helping each other and all those wonderful things that are worth living and dying for. Well, you see, okay, come back on that before we go to our own. Uh, yeah, just quickly. Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I don't think they're that wonderful. Actually, I think they're most of it's just psychological babble and nonsense. It's just we're hungry. We manufacture our potato chip. We chase it in our little wheel, and we think we accomplish something. And we just redundantly do this accomplishment thing over and over and over, chasing an ego gratification that is pretty superficial and meaningless. So, yeah, and if you want to say am I bleak, yeah, I'm as bleak as you won't find a bleaker human being on this planet because I think it's a zero-sum game and I think life has been a preposterous fail. It's preposterously wasted the most valuable Very commodity. Funny, just Can I just finish? The most valuable commodity in the fucking universe. Sorry, didn't mean to say that. Okay, that's all. I just need six more words. Thank you. Go on, Gary, finish your comment and then we're going to go to Aaron and I'll come back to Aaron Thunder. Gary, finish what you were trying to well, say. Well, it was just the six more words. It's the most valuable thing in the universe, and an unintelligent design has squandered it preposterously because it doesn't have a brain, and it doesn't know suffering matters. But suffering does matter. Okay, all right. Uh, in many of the conversations that I've had, I've been since I'm no intent or purpose or plan behind it. It wasn't, it, it wasn't for any grand design. There's no ultimate goal in mind. And so the idea of saying what is the meaning of life is a meaningless question. There obviously isn't a meaning of life. And then where we get into the into philosophy is only how well you deal with that, with that reality that there is no meaning of life. Now, what he's talking about, about, you know, the, the, the pointless pursuits that we follow to find meaning in our lives, however trivial or substantial they may be, that, that's all we've got. And, and one of the things about Buddhism, you know, when you're chasing down other religions and how they deal with this, I mean, the, the, the Buddhists have what would seem to be, by description, a very negative view. Of, of life in general, and yet their, their attitudes seem to be very positive. They are looking at things in, uh, in much the way Gary is, and just coping with that emptiness. Because they, because they had to. And so I'm going to take Gary uh, next. Um, yeah, well, so the, 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 the okay. Buddhists yeah. had to accept it because they had absolutely no control over anything. They didn't even have penicillin. I mean, Buddha had nothing. He had no way to fight nature, so he had to acquiesce to nature. Okay, but obviously they did basically recognize this is a slaughterhouse. This is insane. And they did religiousize fire, and they, it was still a religion. It wasn't just a philosophy. Uh, but the point is, is I would argue that this is the job of philosophers. is isn't just to be a pawn or be a bishop or be a knight or be a king. The job of philosophers is to understand the entire chessboard and understand you don't live your life just to be happy. You have to live your life in the context of the game you're playing in. You can't dump dioxin in somebody else's yard. You can't rape women. You can't do a lot of things because you are stealing too much value from the world for your gratification. We all can understand that that's what a philosopher does. He understands basic ethical equations and he draws those up. I'm saying the basic ethical equation, if we look at it, is there's no rescue mission here for the human race. It can accomplish absolutely nothing, and it's a high risk game, a very high risk game. There's huge so, liability. I mean, so it's so. Well, can, 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 I can I just finish it? Can I just finish it really quickly? So just imagine us, the human race, okay, as a fire engine running down the road at, at 100 miles an hour, and it's taking a risk of doing all kinds of damage. It's doing it very sloppily, and there's no fire. There's no damsel in distress. There's no rape to prevent, okay? It's a high risk. So if I build a nuclear plant under those conditions, you would say, what are you doing? You're not producing anything. Why are you exposing us to potential radiation? That would be my, my argument. Is yeah. there, it's and and this, is, this is what I wanted to ask you about, because I, uh, and even when you finish your comment, uh, I'm still not following it. What, what do you mean by it's a high-risk game? 
Well, the risk is the suffering. We all know that the a certain propensity, a certain a million people this year will commit suicide. A million, okay, we don't even want to go into the numbers. The people who have Alzheimer's disease, will have all kinds of other things that might make them say, I regret ever being born. Uh, Jack Kevorkian said it. Mark Twain said it. We can go down the list of, of human beings who have made the statement, I'd rather not have been because I've seen too much, it's too ugly, it's too messy, it's too sloppy. We've got a bunch of people laying eggs. If birds, if there was a bird out there that existed that laid eggs on dog dew or laid eggs on branch, never built a nest, never did anything to provide for a future or guarantee a future, but just recklessly laid eggs wherever the heck it wanted to, okay, we would call it stupid. We would call that one jerky bird. Well, we don't call the cuckoo that in the well, the cuckoo is even more malicious, so that's even more like a human being, okay? What's you steal somebody about? else's labor. My, my solution is just that this is a conversation that human race needs to go back to having. They started having it 2,000 years ago, and the Christians and the religious nuts took over the philosophical conversation, and we stopped talking about the meaning of life. We stopped talking as Buddha did. We stopped talking like all the great Greek philosophers did about what exactly are we caught up in. And now we have all this evidence. We have evolution. We have DNA. We we have all this understanding of how the universe functions, and now we have the evidence to actually make the argument that, guess what? This is insanely stupid. We just have a bunch of organisms chasing an ego gratification. It's a fake hunger for a fake cheese. We're running a wheel at a very high risk of creating preposterous amounts of suffering, and you will gain absolutely nothing. There's no point in making one of these. Why would you make one? Would, would, would you want to? Would you? Would you think it would be ethical to to implant life on Mars or to implant life on Pluto or to implant life on Saturn? Let me come to you next. Let me come to you next. I just want to clarify exactly what Gary's saying. Gary, we're going back to one of the first comments I made to you. Basically, you think that it is irresponsible of humans to have children because they inevitably are going to suffer. Well, I think it's irresponsible to, to not have a very deep conversation about it first. I think that we should at least oblige people to show enough competence that they would show to drive a car or to do something else in society to conduct the biological experiment that is creating a new human being and creating a sentient being that is going to suffer potentially. Yes, it's a, it's a significant fact that it may, in fact, not appreciate being born. Right, but you're not saying it shouldn't be born. Well, I'm, if I personally could say it shouldn't be, yeah, that's right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let it happen. Do you accept? Because it seems to be inevitable. You accept that all life. Not just human life, all life involves suffering. So well, it's preposterously be wasteful. To end, let me finish, Gary, please. Your solution, your ideal solution, would be to end all life. Because that is the one guaranteed way of ending suffering. Yes, yeah, so it's called antinatalism. People have written books about it. Yes, I think okay. life is no, a I zero. I think clarify. life is a zero sum yeah, game. I just wanted to clarify that. Let's move back to the point. I, I just want to go one sentence. The point where this reaches the facile. Um, look, let's start with a tautology that successful patterns propagate successfully. And if you want to actually promote uh, antinatalism and not propagating genetics as. Um, the, uh, the, the, the way that you think is the way forward, then it's bloody obvious to a blind man that this is not a successful pattern. You don't need to know much about biology to realize that creatures that don't propagate become extinct. We genetically inherit our philosophy, in other words. Okay, so a Christian has to be a Christian, a Muslim has to be a Muslim, a scientist has to be a scientist because we inherit what philosophy. The fuck are you talking well, about? you just basically said we inherit philosophy. Now I said successful patterns. Uh, ex ex successful patterns. Patterns of what? I have a philosophy. My father wasn't an antinatalist. My mother was not an antinatalist. Okay? My entire family is not antinatalist. I obviously have not followed some genetic pattern in being an antinatalist. No, I followed an intellectual pattern. Let, 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 me, let me ask you this, Gary. Can I, can how, I how, how, well, one at a time. We'll go how to many societies in the world? Come to how many societies in the world? promote anti uh, Do I care? Is it a popularity contest? I'm making a logical argument. No, I'm not no, making no, the no, argument no, from no, popularity. No, oh, okay, no, how many no, people no, are Christian? No, how many no, people no, are Muslim? No, please, Gary, Gary, you've had ample opportunity to put forward your case. I've done the response. The same reason that you don't find societies that have antinatalism <laughs> is the same reason that you don't have societies that like to put their heads in blood. 
happens. All right. That's why we have a, a yeah. cutthroat capitalism is because that's the right way to go because it's going to be the most probable, okay, is the fact that using and abusing and raping is a successful strategy in the long run, so that's why we'll have more of it. More exploitation because human beings can never be anything but their biology. They can never be anything but what they're born to. I mean, I think that's a ludicrous, facile argument. Yeah, okay, Gary, I think, actually, I think we've got the point. We're going to get to Aaron next. Okay, now, maybe, maybe I'm just a, a rarity in that maybe I'm just a product of uh, exceptionally good genetics or something, but, I mean, I'm almost 50 years old, and I still haven't, you know, I still don't need glasses. I still feel good every day, all day long, right? I mean, I enjoy life. I have always enjoyed life. I've never had a, you know, a whole lot of money. But I've always had a really good time. I have enjoyed every aspect of my life. Uh, my children enjoy being alive. This is one of those things that procreates, okay? This, this, the feeling that we get when I am helping somebody is infinitely better than when I have screwed somebody over. When I screw somebody over, I feel completely shitty about it and I stop doing it. These are, these are natural things. I don't understand why there should be a, a criminality, as you put it, in having children. Now, giving value to, to that which is rare, I understand that this is a human tendency and that and that maybe we shouldn't have quite so many children if we can't take care of them properly. Maybe if we should only have children or pets or whatever that we can take care of properly and nurture and encourage and promote something better. This is this is where I feel I mean I, I agreed with your initial statement. But I think on every other level, you and I are going to be discordant. Well, yeah, it's a progressive yeah, argument. Cool. It's a progressive yeah. argument. So you can start with just caring about things, and that's just fine with me. Any sentient you care for is, is a positive thing. I'm just saying the end game logic is the visualization of the game, the chessboard, the, the every organism with its teeth that are made for chomping, the attrition rate of the young. Um, and the bottom line is, is I could make the same. I could just say Fukushima worked for 40 years wonderfully, okay? So, yeah, you can't count that one time everything went wrong. So it's really nice for you to say you're happy and your kids are happy. Well, I'm not happy, okay? I'd like to punch, I'd like to go back in time and punch my mother in the vagina so I could be aborted because I think this place is disgusting. I think the human race is disgusting. I think the whole fucking carnage mechanism is disgusting. It makes, it, it's vile, it's grotesque. Ten lion cubs for every one lion that gets to maturity. I mean, the, 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 the attrition is obscene and disgusting, all right? I find it insufferable every day of my life. So fine, I'm the Fukushima. So what I'm asking you to do is balance that equation. All right, you justify to me why you have a right to say I feel good about it so I'm going to invest in it, but you're investing, I'm the one you're going to pull the straw for. I'm the one that gets stuck with the straw. Okay, we're going to go to concordance. Oh, and just I before I do come to concordance, it looks as if we're being featured, so if you are watching us from outside, so to speak, do you come and join us? You're watching the Magic Sandwich Show, uh, a live call-in show, uh, where pretty much any topics uh, are discussed. So do come and join us. Concordance. I think this is this is the inevitable conclusion that you come to if if you have an ultimately reductionist viewpoint. If you break everything down to the molecules and the the, the genes, then then you're not you're missing part of the picture. You're focusing on the fact that the painting is just a bunch of paint, right? There's there's more to it well, than said, just the suffering. Well, the pattern itself is interesting. Don't the we? Pattern itself is ultimately creative, Gary. We're ultimately creating. Well, tell that to Freud. Gary, Gary, you will be allowed an opportunity to respond. Please, please let Concordance finish. If you boil all of society down to this guy killed that guy. If you boil all of art down to, you know, people making pretty pictures, if you boil it all down, you strip away what actually is meaningful about the scenario, and that is all of the emergent properties of these little tiny bits. Each of the little tiny bits is by itself not terribly interesting. If you look at the Olympics, you say, oh, every year some guy wins, every guy, you know, 20 people lose, uh, 400 people are left at home thinking they could have done it. But the exceptionalism of those gold medal winners, the, the striving, the striving through suffering is, is something that I personally can admire, even if I'm not the person taking the Nobel Prize. 
I'm not the person winning the gold medal. I can admire the striving towards, even if I'm not part of the successful cadre of truly elite that are oh, okay, okay. To grasp that, uh, uh, that ultimate u- utility, that, that ultimate reward. Well, you just basically explained to me why you like big breasts. Oh, you're, you're not making a rational argument for why life succeeds. You're just basically saying that my heroin, when I get off on my heroin, it's really super cool. It's such a great experience that it's worth a million dead cats. It's m- worth a million this or a million... I'll write it all off because my glory moment is so spectacular. And I'm just going to argue I see none of that. I see no potential in that, okay? I'm not a person that hasn't indulged... Okay, great. I think we've reached the impasse of uh, irreconcilable differences, Gary. Um, if you really don't want to actually, if you really don't think that society is promoting themselves as a good thing, I wish you good luck with it, okay? But what, what does that mean? Okay, fine. You're somehow saying I am not making, I'm not even, I don't even get what William Lane Craig would get, would be, which would be an argument. Would you say that to William Lane Craig? We just, do we just disagree? Let's not talk anymore. No, you wouldn't. So why are you doing it to me? Why are you I discounting you, me I, like that? Gary, one moment. I think the reason is because I don't see that there's any middle ground. You've obviously thought about this. You're obviously um, very compassionate about your beliefs. And the arguments that you're hearing, obviously, you're not accepting. And the arguments you're giving out are obviously not being accepted. So I don't see there's much middle ground. That's why I don't think there's much progress. That can be made. <laughs> okay, well, fine. I just wish you'd say that about them. Why do you why do you bother arguing with religious people then? Because to me, you just made this huge cop-out. I, I can't even... This will be the magic cop-out moment in my YouTube history. I can't believe this. You will argue with creationists, and you won't argue with me. Amazing. 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 Well, Owen, if you want to to come in, Gary, a moment, please. Owen wants to come in. Sure. We were talking today about um, a a project where in in Russia they uh, they did this test where they were uh, breeding foxes. Uh, to try to find more domesticated foxes and, and just selecting for the the the, the more friendly of, of the foxes. And what they got as a genetic link to that is that the more docile the foxes uh, became, they also showed other traits that, that you get when you derive dogs from wolves. You get curly tails and strange color patterns and things like that. And I thought, well, why do we do uh, experiments of this sort? Why don't we try ever to do an experiment wherein we just promote intelligence? Like, uh, get a whole bunch of raccoons together and then let's let's breed them for intelligence, run them through a little intelligence test, and then see if we can actually promote the intelligence of another species, you know, significantly. And the reason that I would like to do something like this is because the pointlessness, the pointlessness that he was talking about before, I see from the entirely different spectrum. I imagine all of these sunrises and sunsets for, you know, the millions of years that we've had vertebrates walking around looking at the sky and not appreciating the beauty of that scene. I mean... Think, think about when you talk about the meaning of life. You think about how many millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, you've had beautiful colors and beautiful patterns and beautiful textures on all these animals, and there's nothing with the ability to appreciate to sit back and say, "Wow, that looks absolutely fabulous." I mean, that's that because that, I don't think your argument is being uh, persuading Gary. So, Gary, I'm going to give you the last word, and then I'm going to move on to the next caller. Yeah. The last word. Well, 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 fine enough, but yeah, that's all subjective bibble babble. We can make people happy. We can give people, uh, through chemistry, through even electricity, we could give them glory moments. We could give them all this stoic, proud, I'm the greatest gladiator in the world. They could, we could give everybody the illusion of being superheroes, but being supermen, all this stuff, and that's all that is, okay? You're just talking about gratifying, simplistic, biological needs, and you're sitting there and making it a stoic, syphicus, I'm pushing the magic boulder up the magic hill of purpose, and no, okay, the fact is, there's no okay, purpose. We've got, we've got people stacked up now. Thank you very much for your call. Cop out. Man, what fucking pussies.